Erev Tov, I'm Stephen Ben-Noon, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Today is a prophetic segment, and we're picking back up on this story about the Vatican actually recognizing officially that there will be a quote-unquote Palestinian state. And as many people know, there is really no such thing as a Palestinian people. That's a name that kind of got stuck to them uh, back when the British were here and they set up a British mandate for the Jewish people to actually return to their homeland. They called it Palestine. But as far as the people that lived here, it was an Arabic people. There were Bedouins, of course, Arabic people, uh, many of them Muslims of the Sunni tribe, but not a Palestinian people. This is a name that really became more prominent and famous with uh, uh, Yasser Arafat when he was uh, pushing for the, the, the two-state solution there uh, back in 1993 with the Oslo Peace Accord that Shimon Peres, actually the son of Ahab, if you look at it from a biblical perspective, he is the son of Ahab, that God swore he would bring judgment upon his son because Ahab, at least he repented in sackcloth and ashes after making the alliance with the Gentile people. But now, Shimon Peres has actually made that covenant and alliance with the Vatican, for, with Rome. And this is why we're seeing all of this push by the Vatican, even from years back, as early as 1993, when we see the, the, the signing of the Oslo Accords with Shimon Peres, and also in 1994, then the Vatican really became strong with a small people, according to Daniel chapter 11. The Bible says that that prince that shall come, speaking of the same prince, that he would come up strong with a small people. And that clearly is what we're seeing now. I want to talk to you a little bit more about that, but first let's take a look at the covenant that is to be signed according to Daniel chapter 9. I want to just share that with you before we actually go into some of the news articles on this. Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, it says, And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Now, clearly, Messiah has already been cut off, and that was at the end of the 69th week, exactly in the time frame. So there's still one week left, one seven-year period, that is still granted to the Jewish people. <clears throat> but it says that the prince would be cut off, um, but not for himself. And the people, notice this, the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. So there's a prince that shall come. And he's not the Mashiach. The Mashiach is the one that is actually cut off. But the prince that shall come will be of the people that destroy the temple and the sanctuary. Destroy the, excuse me, destroy the city and the sanctuary, the holy temple, the second temple. Now, those of you that know the historical facts behind that, and even on the Ark of Titus in Rome, it was the Roman general Titus that led that overthrow of Israel. It's kind of odd, too, if you think about it, because who was in, who was in control of Israel back in the time when Yeshua was on earth? That is Jesus of Nazareth. It was the Romans. They were actually the occupiers, and the Israelis were the ones that were under that Roman occupation, and they were hoping that Yeshua would be the one that would deliver them from the Romans. That's still yet to be fulfilled, and it will be fulfilled. Yeshua, on his return, he will deliver them this time from the bondage of the Romans. And it's actually not just the Romans, it's Esau and his descendants. Pick that up in just a moment. Let's continue on, though. It says that he would be of the people to destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of war desolations are determined. Now going back to that destruction by Titus, many people would argue well, it was actually the Syrians that did the dirty work, and Titus really did never give the order. If you go back into history, we find in the book of Kings, there was only one descendant of Esau that escaped the sword of David. That was Hadad. Hadad, by the way, escapes some of his servants with him into Egypt and is raised by the Pharaoh of Egypt in his own house, just like Moses was reared, learning all the ancient wisdom of the Egyptians. And then after he came of age, like Moses, he wanted to go to his people. And of course, he was of the children of Esau, and he let him go. 
Pharaoh let him go. He said, I've given you everything. You have lack of nothing, but he still wanted to go. He became the king of Syria. Now you understand why? Of course, we are shooting in the background. There's already unrest starting here today in the old city there. Uh, but anyway, let's stay on track here. Um, so he actually takes and Hadad goes uh, from Syria after being the king there and his descendants migrated into northern Africa and according to Obadiah they later go into the, the, to Italy and to Rome and settle there. And we know this because the story of Obadiah, the prophet Obadiah, is only one chapter long. He speaks about Esau and his descendants. And he, he's the one, that, Obadiah is the one that prophesies that it would be Esau's descendants that would sit by as if they're one with him for the destruction of Israel, for the destruction of the temple. Let me just kind of brief, briefly share a little bit of that with you as well, because like I said, this is a prophetic moment. It's very important we understand this. In verse 7 it says, All men of thy, let me back up, verse 6, How are the things of Esau searched out? Or his hidden things sought up. You see, because people really didn't seem to know or they forgot about the prophecy, what happens to Esau? Remember, God said that he hated Esau from his mother's womb, but he loved Jacob. But yet, we see so many prophecies about how Esau hated his brother, Jacob, and would do all kinds of evil to him, but yet in his own natural life, we really didn't see the, the we saw the hatred, yes, he wanted to kill his brother, but when Jacob came back home to the promised land, Esau ended up receiving him. That was actually prophesied of Esau's descendants. So here it is. It says here, how are the things of Esau searched out? Where is he at? What's he doing? What is his end, in other words? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, and they eat thy bread, have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. That's kind of ironic in itself if you think about it, because Psalm 83 clearly talks about a confederacy. A confederacy with this one man that is raised up as the head, and of course that head, their leader in other words, happens to be of Esau. And then it names all the countries that are confederate with him. I believe it says Edom there, but it's the descendants of Esau. So you can use Psalm 83 as, as corresponding with this. In verse, t uh, verse, uh, um, let's see, verse, verse 8, Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom, and understanding out of the mountain of Esau, and thy mighty men, O Tyre, uh, me, Keman, shall be dismayed in the end, that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Even in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was this one of them. You see, it clearly shows Esau, or in this case Titus, who was representing Esau's descendants, stood as one of them. So yes, God is showing you that it's not actually Titus that is doing all the slaughter of the Jews in 70 AD. It is the Syrian soldiers that he had. Of course, but he already had a, a, a covenant with the Syrians because he married in among them. He actually became the king of Syria. So he had, he had their, their people always stayed connected. God said his hatred against his brother. He, he let them be destroyed. Now watch this here. Verse 12, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah, neither uh, in the day of their destruction. Clearly 70 A.D. The house of Israel is already gone. So it is only the house of Judah and in their destruction. So God clearly identifies Esau as the one being that was there with Titus to destroy the temple and the sanctuary, as Daniel also notes here. Daniel said that the prince that shall come, that's the Antichrist, shall be of the people. It shall be of the people that destroyed the city and the sanctuary, or the city and the temple. 
and it was Titus the Roman general, Esau's descendants, Jacob's own brother, that hated him so bad, he destroyed all of this. Now, but notice, the prince that shall come is of these people. So this Antichrist, and we know that the Antichrist spirit, as Paul said, is already there. He said it's already among them. And clearly, there were many wolves that had already entered in among. And of course, from those wolves there, in Paul's time, they became early church fathers. From there, the many popes that came, a succession of popes. Yes, so many antichrists would come. Antichrist, antichristo, the Greek word meaning like Christ. In other words, they profess Christianity. You have to remember too, what do we have? Judas Iscariot, who was a Levite, actually betrayed Christ. He was a Levite, and he betrayed him. One of the twelve. So wouldn't it seem reasonable in the day we're living in now that once again, God will have an Antichristo, one that is like Christ, one that claims to be one of his apostles, to be the one that betrays him, one that is the Antichristo. And this is what the prince that shall come shall be. Now, then it says here in verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. It's going to confirm a covenant for one week. Now, that may be the only time God allows him to have it, whether or not he actually does a quote-unquote seven-year covenant. Rome is not that stupid. I don't think they are. But I don't. Of course, we do know that the two-state solution was supposed to be a seven-year plan, according to John Kerry. And the Pope Francis was very instrumental in trying to orchestrate this particular plan and bring it to being. But it didn't seem to come together at that time. But ironically, the Vatican got Mount Zion, tomb of David. I know many guys that listen to us, they've asked me before, Steve, what do you think about the Jewish Antichrist? Doesn't the scripture say you'd be Jewish? There is some truth to that. What makes him Jewish? When Israel actually give him a seat at David's tomb, they give him an official seat when Pope Benedict was the Pope then, that the Pope of Rome would have an official seat at David's tomb. Pope Francis actually sat on that seat and sat on it with his crown on, showing that he was what? King of Israel. Because David was king of Israel. But it's interesting that it's done on a tomb. So it's not a, it's not a king of life, it's a king of death. It's very symbolic in itself. And he did sit there. And he has actually got that seat. So what does that do? In that case, it makes him Jewish in type because why? He is now the king of Israel, according to what the Jews have allowed to happen in this country, giving him a seat. Anyway, we go on to read here that they make the covenant for one week. Now that covenant will be broke in the midst of the week, as we know. Because Israel will wake up after the two witnesses come and preach for three and a half years. According to Revelation and according to Zechariah, the two olive uh, branches on either side of the golden lampstand, as the prophet Zechariah was told by the angel, these are the two anointed ones that John wrote about in Revelation, the two witnesses that are to come. When you think I blast this, what I'm fixing to do, they will blast this covenant more than you could ever imagine. They will bring Israel to repentance, to recognize their Messiah, to come to deliver them from the hands of the Romans. But the Romans have to be back into control in order to fulfill prophecy. But clearly, the dividing of the land, we know it's prophetic. But the government should be crying out. But yet we're not seeing much of the government crying out. They're not saying very much about this. Oh, there's some articles in some places that said the government is disappointed about it. But where is the outcry? There is none. And Wall Street Journal, it says here, Pope Francis will canonize two Palestinian, quote unquote, Palestinians in the coming week. It's actually going to be this Sunday after the official signing of recognizing the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, after they have signed in the official document recognizing them as a state on Saturday, Mahmoud Abbas is going to the Vatican, will be there Saturday for this signing, right there in Vatican Square. 
It is deplorable. It is sickening. And this is, we should fight it with everything we got. Now we know scripturally, the land's gotta be divided because God has said so. But we still should be a voice that speaks against it because we know it's the Antichrist and the people must be warned. They also say in the article with the Wall Street Journal, Israel was disappointed to hear of the final version of the agreement with the Palestinians. The final agreement, so they've actually got to hear what the contents were, and they're only disappointed? They should have been outraged. Why only disappointed? Is this only to save face amongst the uh, religious Jews of my brethren, the Orthodox community? Is this only to save face with you, my brothers? You should be outraged, and I'm sure many of you are. I know you are because you know that God gave us this land and this land was meant for us. You know, and I'm not against the Arab people that are true believers that love Yeshua. I'm not against them whatsoever. This is the only land that God give his people. And he give he give he even says about Esau, God had appointed him a land. Even when Moses was coming up, God told Moses, that is Esau's land. I have given it to him and his descendants. And also with Ishmael, the same thing. He gave them a portion, but he gave this land here, what you see back here, including the Dome of the Rock, which is an abomination that should be torn down. He gave that to the Jewish people. This is where the temple of God should sit. Now we do know a third temple will be built. I don't, I personally think it will not be built where the Dome of the Rock is. I think to be able to try to make a mutual agreement, they'll build it beside it. But I could be wrong on that. We'll just have to see what happens there. Anyway, further on in the same article, Palestinian senior official of the PLO stated, we look at the Vatican uh, recognition as more than a diplomatic, but symbolic and moral significance. Why does he say more than diplomatic? Recently, when me and my wife were in Rome, we were given a tour guide by an actual Catholic Roman guy there, and he showed the very flag that they have with the two keys on there. And he said, these two keys represent temporal and spiritual powers. And he said, we believe that the Catholic Pope of the Vatican here actually has full power. These two keys represent that he has full power of all the political systems of the world, as well as all the religious systems of the world. Doesn't that sound like it's in line with what the Bible says too, that this great whore that's set upon those seven hills in Revelation was the mother of harlots? This is not just denominational churches that are returning to Rome right now. This is even the Muslim religion and many other religions. She's the mother of these religions and they return back to their mother. Now, France, uh, also said it will be sponsoring a UN Security Council resolution of a Palestinian state. And Sweden too is saying that they, will, they recognize the Palestinians as a state. The United States of course is saying that they are withholding any comment at this particular point. You know they're for it because they've been pushing for it. Obama tried to overthrow Netanyahu and his administration. Because why? Netanyahu's not for it. And I know there's some people that really believe that he is because he's trying to do a balancing act here. But you know, today I had a Palestinian guy come up here, drop me off on, on the uh, Mount of Olives to do this recording. And you know what's really funny? He didn't even drop me off in the right place. He drops me off way back in the Arabic section. I guess maybe he figured they would kill me on the way here. He even was worried about them stoning his car. So why are you worried about it? I said, you're Palestinian. He said, they'll think I'm a Jew. Okay, God protected me and brought me here safely anyway to bring you this particular news article. And, but anyway, he said that Netanyahu and his government are staunchly against a Palestinian state. He said, in fact, what they believe is that the Palestinians should go to Jordan, go to Syria. And I don't mean it in a mean way of saying it, but truly God has actually appointed a land for Ishmael, his descendants, as well as Esau. And it was not in Israel. And so yes, there is land that God has given for the Palestinian people, or the Arabic people. Like I said, Palestinian only gives credence to their cause. I know that many times you only understand it if I say this word. But the Arabic people that are calling themselves Palestinians, it is where they should be. Unless they want to be absorbed into a state of Israel and comply with the laws of Israel. If they want to do that, then that, according to Moses, is also acceptable in the law. Anyway, Abbas 
uh, it stated on another uh, article with ProCon.org, that's P-R-O-C-O-N.org, Abbas stated that the, that the uh, Vatican's actions set a significant precedent. This is a very important recognition as that the Vatican has very uh, important political status that stems from its spiritual status. Once again, showing that both temporal and spiritual powers of the world. There is no doubt that this two-state solution is going to come about. And in closing, I want to share with you one more particular scripture in regards to this. And this is God's own judgment. This is what God said that He will do in, regarding, in regards to this because the land has been divided against God's desire. He says in Joel chapter 3, verse 1, 2, and 3, For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, the nations, and part it, excuse me, excuse me, um, I will plead for them there for my people and for my heritage Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for a wine that they might drink you understand they divided the land God brings all nations you know why he brings all nations because all the nations will turn against Israel in favor of a Palestinian state. When the nations know that this is a clear biblical mandate, the Pope of Rome, Pope Francis, you know it is a biblical promise, according to Zechariah 12, that the house of Judah would return first to this land. And this is when they would recognize who the Messiah is. Not because you said so, but God will send the two witnesses here, and then that's when they will know who the Messiah is. Not because of some guy that sits high and mighty in his little papal palace over there. You know, and I know you look like the humble guy that went down to the lower apartment, you and Pope Benedict. You are the two false witnesses, but God has two true witnesses that will come here and then you will find out who they really are. And when their dead bodies lay in the street here, right there at Golgotha over the hill there for three and a half days, then God will be justified in stoning you to your, your whole church system and everything because he has to have two witnesses before he can stone a prostitute and you will be stoned at that day. It will come to, a, to pass because God has said that when their dead bodies lay in the street and the whole world rejoices, this is when he will bring them to an end. This is when Rome will come to an end. He will plead with you. And you know what the pleading is? The pleading is when the two witnesses come, it'll be the only time you have time for a space to repent. And he will even give you, Pope Francis, a space to repent as well during that three and a half years. But if you still reject it, Pharaoh was given that opportunity. God will give it one more time. And if you reject mercy, then judgment will follow. There is no other way around it. And every nation that is for this two-state solution will find the judgments of Almighty God. You will be given three and a half years to make that decision to let his people go. Because God will say to his witnesses, let my people go and if you do not let them go you Pharaoh you you Pharaoh of Egypt you Pope of, of this earth who claims to be the Viker when the people look upon you as the scripture says and they will say is this the man that caused the world to tremble because you look so innocent they don't know what kind of wickedness is behind there but I know who you are and I will expose you, your system, and all the world that joins together with you for a two-state solution. I will join and I will denounce it and I will cry out to this world to let them know that you are a fraud, a fake, and a phony, and every bit of what you're doing is clearly of the devil. And I say to you, repent while you have time. And you need to repent to the God of heaven. You need to repent to Yeshua HaMashiach, who's the only mediator between God and man. Not Mary, she is a blessed woman, because Yeshua said every all nations they all generations will call her blessed but you need to repent I'm Stephen Benoon you are watching the prophetic segment of Israeli news live they have divided the land it will be official tomorrow Shabbat Shalom